We would like to thank Glendon Spires Mobile Home Community for the use of their clubhouse in the production of the following program. Glendon Spires, exceptional values in senior living, close to shopping, golf, fishing, and restaurants. 951-658-1818. Hi, I'm Pastor Judy and I am here today hopefully to have a wonderful time uh, with you together. We are here at London Spires and we are using their clubhouse once again and we're excited about it. We're glad to be here. Uh, we need to let you know that we are on our new web page and it's almv.us uh, and go uh, see the web page and see what we're doing because all of the sermons all of the recipes will be there for you uh, we're going to start off this morning uh, by doing some fried chicken and I want you to know that as we do this I'm going to make a peach little peach cobbler as well uh, but let's get our chicken started and uh, I'm going to take my chicken now I have it in water salted water and uh, we're going to go ahead and give it a flower bath and we're going to just add a few pieces in here and get them in the skillet and let them get frying. So again, I'm glad to be here with you. Uh, remember, it's food for body and soul. We're not just here to feed our body, but we're here to feed our soul. And we need to find out that our scripture today is Ecclesiastes 3.1. It's something that I'm sure you're very familiar with. But uh, we need to stay comfortable in God's word. And Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And so whatever is going on in your life, there is a season for that. Uh, you know, we have sorrows, we have heartaches, we have happiness, we have laughter. There is always something going on in our life. But don't ever forget that God has your life under control. If you belong to him, then he has everything for you. Amen? And so let's go ahead and let's get our chicken in. We want to go ahead and make sure it's good and coated. Mm. Got my skillet nice and hot. I'm going to turn it down just a hair. I don't want it to burn before it gets cooked. You need to have a good coating of flour on it. And I also have garlic salt in my flour plus regular salt. And as it fries, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, put a little extra as well. But let's get this chicken in so we have plenty of time. You don't ever want to serve raw chicken. And I am going to leave the skin on it. If you want, you can take this after you've cooked it and you can take the skin off of it. But this, the uh, skin gives it wonderful flavor. Okay. When in doubt, have a piece of fried chicken. It'll, it'll solve everything. I love good fried chicken. I can remember my mom. This is my Aunt Noni. You've heard me talk about Aunt Noni before. This is one of her recipes. And uh, every Sunday, we would have fried chicken. Um, I don't know whether it was because it was a cheaper piece of meat. I can't tell you. I just know that fried chicken was something that we had and that we always look forward to having. Okay. Oh, it's looking good. Set this over here. Now remember, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to salt each piece. And I'm going to give the garlic salt a, a turn around the skillet as well. Now this is going to take a little while. I did cut some of the pieces uh, a little bit smaller because a uh, large uh, chicken breast takes much longer. So I've cut those into pieces. Okay, and while that is cooking, I'm going to go ahead and start on my little uh, peach tarts. And we're going to take this. I'm going to start out. It's only going to take a small amount because we're not making a big pie. Okay, so I'm going to start out with a cup of flour. Okay. 
and I wore a purple shirt. When we get done, we're going to have a purple and white shirt when we get done, but that's all right. Going to add in some salt. Have to have the salt in the flour because it will never season if you don't put your salt. A good heaping teaspoon of salt. I always work with a knife. Don't know how to work with anything else. That's just the way my mom told me how to do it. And then we're going to add wonderful butter Crisco. We've made pies before. Remember, I don't use the cold butter. Uh, I don't freeze my spoon. I don't do anything like that. Not that you don't and not that you can't. I'm going to take two heaping tablespoons of the Crisco. And we're going to cut this all in to our flour. So this is one cup of flour and about two heaping tablespoons of, flour, of um, shortening. This makes a wonderful pie crust. Just beautiful. I've done it with the cold butter, the cold water, the cold everything, and I'm not saying it's not wonderful. It is. But I'll tell you what happens is that it intimidates the young cook or the cook that just doesn't have um, a lot of time to do something. And so this, you just throw in the shortening into the flour and the salt, cut it all up together. Nothing intimidating about it. I remember the first pie I ever made for my dad. I don't know how he ever ate it because I put milk and um, butter, just things I thought should go in there. That pie crust was hard as a rock. He couldn't begin, but he was trying to chew it and eat it. But it was terrible. All right, you can see how we have this all cut up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add our water. Again, I don't use cold water. This is just tap water. Let's start off with two tablespoons. Because you're going to stir this. You don't want too much water because then you have paste. So you just want to put a couple of tablespoons to start. Now this needs just a touch more. Let's do three. And we're going to put it on the flour that's in the bottom. There's another. See how that just brought that right together? Yeah. Okay. And you don't have to have every little tiny piece of flour out of there. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this out. We're going to put flour on our board. And then we're going to take this out and roll it. We're going to like make little mini pie, peach pies. Now what's left in your bowl, a little bit, don't worry with it. Let me set this over here. Just take the big amounts that's there, pat it down. And it's nice and moist, not too moist. You need to be able to work with it. Now I know that some cooks take it now and they put it in the refrigerator. I don't do that. I get it right out and work with it. Okay? Want enough flour on your board? That's the key, is having that flour there. We'll turn that chicken over here in just a few minutes, but let's get our pies all in. This rolling pin is 50 years old. My husband and I will be married 49 years. And this was given to me as a wedding gift, a shower gift, the year before we were married. My Aunt Violet gave this to me. So we're going to go ahead and... Remember, got to have a lot of, lot of flour because you don't want this to stick. Now we're just going to take this and do it out nice and flat because we're going to take our cookie cutters and we're going to make our small pie tins. I told you we're going to be wearing all this flour before we get done. I should have wore a white shirt. Okay, because we need to get six tops and six bottoms out of this. So we need to roll it out nice and small, as far as thin, I mean. Okay, so let's take our, this is our pie, or muffin tin. Now what I did is I took these muffin tins and I put parchment paper, cut a little strip, put it in the bottom, because we need to be able to get those little pies out of here. If we didn't have this to pull up on, 
you know what kind of a mess we would have. So let's start with, we need six of these. Now what I'm going to do, because these have to be padded down in that pie tin, so I'm going to take the top of my spray tin, and I'm just going to take these and I'm going to drop them down in here. And then I'm just going to take my top. Is that fantastic? Oh, I tell you, modern marvels never cease. The top of a spray can, oh, you don't have to have a bunch of stuff to cook. Okay, we're going to drop this down in here. Remember, you need your little tags to be standing up. Take your lid, just pop it down in there real easy. Don't want to smash it to the bottom of the... Wouldn't your kids like to do this? You don't have to roll this out anymore. Just drop it right in there so your little tabs stay up. Take your lid. And away it goes. Yeah. Just drop it right down in there. Take your lid. And away it is. Let's see about we need to turn these over. Nope, not yet. Almost. Because you want them really to turn them only one time. Isn't going to kill it to have it twice, but if you can get it nice and brown on one side and then turn it over, you're done. Okay, drop this down in there. Make sure your little tags are up. I can hear you out there. You're going, I want to do that. Well, I want you to do it too. Take these little bitty pies, hold them in your hand. Oh, oh, oh. Now we're going to go ahead and fill these. I just have a can of peach filling. Make sure that you get the peaches in there, not just the juice. Fill that right in there. You don't want a whole lot because these are just little bite sizes. So you don't want a big gob. You want just enough because the crust is going to be what's wonderful. You can go back and put just a little more. See, there's nothing intimidating about this. You just play with it. You get comfortable with it. You'll be popping these things out. You can make cherry. You can make um, little cream pies. Anything. Blueberry, strawberry. It's unlimitless. All right, I'm going to put one more right over here. In a touch. Right there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, we're, this is a three inch ring. Now we're going to take a two inch. And we're going to cut this. Now this is really hard. Looky here. We're just going to drop that puppy right over that pie. Chicken, chicken, I hear you. Okay. These are great for parties because you just pick it up with your finger and there you go. Don't have to have a fork. Don't have to have a plate. Don't have to have anything. Oop, that one fell apart. We'll just leave it there. Because we have plenty of dough. Now because we have to have a vent in order for this to ste not steam, I just take a little pair of scissors and cut a little star in there. Just enough for you to be able to have an air vent. Mm -hmm. The kids would like to do that. Now what I do is I take a little bit of milk and a brush 
and I just brush this has to be whole milk it can't be um, two percent or one percent because it won't brown you have to have the butter fat in it so just go ahead and put these right over there this will brown up and puff up I have one to show you when I get done okay we're gonna pop these in the oven Okay, and looky here. Is that the cutest thing you ever saw? Look at these little baby peach pies. Okay, so this you can take and put it all back together and make a jelly roll, all kinds of stuff. You can make a pie crust, a bottom pie crust. Okay, let's check our chicken. Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn them because I'm going to turn them back. But I'm going to go ahead and turn them one time. Get them started on the other. Now, I use the Butter Crisco in this. I love Butter Crisco. And you see how these are going to be nice and crunchy? I'm going to put a little bit of salt on the other side, a little regular, a little garlic. And you know, you can, after you do this, if you want to do it a little bit ahead, you can take this, once it's fried nice and crispy, lay it on a cookie sheet and put it in the oven. That way it'll just stay crispy and you don't have to worry with it. You can serve it up later. Okay, well let's go ahead and clean this over here. Like I said, you can take this extra pie dough and you can make a one crust um, pie dough. Looky here. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, boy, I really messed it up. Oh well. Um, you can take that and roll it out and make just a one crust. You know, so many times you think, oh, I would make um, a cream pie, but I don't have a crust. But you can take these, roll them out, put them in a pie tin, prick the bottom, and stick it in the freezer. When you need to use it, you just take it out, stick it in the oven, and you've got your pie tin uh, ready for your one crust pie. So anyway, remember our scripture today is Ecclesiastes 3 1 in everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven I want you to think back over your life and think about the different things that have happened to you and you have said to God why did this happen to me why in the world did this situation take place in my life but if you're really honest with yourself and honest with the Lord when you get through that time, you come out the other side and it'll make you stronger or it will make you weaker. Because if you don't allow God to teach you and guide you in whatever that season is, you need to make sure that that's what you do. So I encourage you to do that. You know, we're here in this show, Food for Body and Soul. We are here to be able to encourage you, for you to tune in and have a scripture of the day. We're not here to cram anything down your throat. We're not here to, to push anything off on you. We're here to give you God's scripture uh, in order for you to have something to cling to to get you through the day that he has given you. You're only here because God has made it possible for you to be here. So remember that scripture, Ecclesiastes 3.1. Okay. All righty. These are browning up nice, but I want them to be really, really crispy. Just going to turn them one more time, and then we'll turn them back once, and they should be done. Now you can see I have a lot of shortening in here. You want the top of it to be not covered, because you're not deep frying them, you're just pan frying them. 
but you do need the oil to be uh, at least up to the side. So when you turn it over, now you've got your chicken in the other side. Gonna let these brown even more. They're gonna be wonderful. We're back to this beautiful chicken. We're going to take it and put it on a rack and drain it. Isn't that beautiful? All the crispies and the wonderful flavors. As we take this and just let it drain a little, I'm going to take the um, oil that I've cooked this in, and I'm going to drain probably 90% of it off of the, out of the skillet. And I'm going to take the, the, what's left, and I'm going to fry spaghetti in it. This is one of my husband's favorite meals, is fried chicken. Now, he loves mashed potatoes and gravy and all of that. But it's amazing. This fried spaghetti is wonderful. Just has a little different flavor, something different than having mashed potatoes and gravy. He would never knock uh, mashed potatoes and gravy, but I want to remind you before we get this finished about our scripture, Ecclesiastes 3, 1. And it is a there's everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I hope that you take that with you today and really allow it to minister to you. Remember, we're here for body and soul. So here goes the grease. We want the leavings to stay in here, and I'm going to pull a couple of them back out because we want those crispies. I think we, we kept most of them. Leave that up on about 400. You want this to be nice and hot. I'll put this back over here. Now I boiled my spaghetti and I've let it set because you want it to be um, rinsed because you don't want it to be as real sticky. You want it to be a little but not, not to the extreme. You find my tongs. Okay, let's just take this and we're going to pull it out and we're going to put it into our skillet. You want that nice fried sound. You keep it moving and all the leavings and everything that is in the skillet is going to come up and go around the spaghetti. I think that's about enough. We'll check that out and see. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add just a little bit of butter to the top of this. because we want this to be nice and creamy. About a tablespoon. And as we stir this around, get our butter down in the bottom, it's going to coat this spaghetti. Let that butter melt. And it's going to go down there in all of those drippings. Now what I'm going to do, because I want this to turn over, so I'm going to get a big spoon. Because I want this to all turn. What a different flavor that this has. Because it's picking up all of that drippings from that. Turn your fire down just a little. You don't want to scorch your spaghetti. Let that butter all melt. Now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... And we're going to put a little bit of garlic salt. Oh, about a half a teaspoon, teaspoon, to your flavor. You're going to taste this in a little bit. And I know this is going to be one of your favorites. What kid doesn't like spaghetti? But you know, sometimes I just have a problem with tomato sauce. 
just tomato sauce, tomato sauce. This is a completely different flavor altogether. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of onion on the top of this. Just enough for garnish. But I'm going to taste it first. Remember, go to our webpage, almv.us. That'll pull you right up to our webpage and keep you informed on everything that we're doing. Get a little taste. Uh-oh. Mm-mm-mm. I outdid myself. This is wonderful. Oh. Turn the fire off. Let's get it into our bowl. If I can get it without it going all over the counter. Oh. Ah. Voila. Oop, oop. Oh. Let's take this and get a couple of little onion sprigs. All righty. Just take this and sprinkle it over the top of it. Oh, here we are. Here's our chicken, our spaghetti. What a meal. Remember, hands are the best tools you'll ever have. You take this and enjoy it. I'm so glad that you were here with me today. There isn't anything better that I like to do than to spend time with you. So come tomorrow and join me again, and I will meet you right back here. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Pastor Bob Stead of Abundant Life Ministries of the Valley, and I'd like to introduce to you my wife, Pastor Judy. And we want to invite you every Sunday at 1230 at our new meeting place at the Spirit of Joy Church at the corner of Johnston and Sanderson. And we hope to see you there. Thank you for joining Pastor Judy Stett. If you'd like to drop her a line, send it to Food for Body and Soul, P.O. Box 5310, Hemet, California, 92544. Don't forget to visit our website, almv.us or AbundantLifeMinistriesOfTheValley.com.